Ari Drafters here today with a video on Double Masters 2022. I've just watched the weekly MTG stream and I did think about doing a little video to it or something, just touching on a little topic that I picked up on from a drafter's perspective. But actually the video, the, the stream was really, really draft centric. So I'm not putting a face on that day because I wanted to get this out as quick as possible. But I'm going to go through what the video went through, what the stream uh, talked about from a drafter's perspective. And first of all, it is the colours that you're going to be drafting round. So usually, when we have a draft set, you'll have the 10 colour pairs. Sometimes this changes. Sometimes you'll have five colour trios. So this could be either the wedges or the shards. We've just had the shards in uh, Streets of New Capenna. Uh, well, apparently we did. Three colour format, my bum. But what we're doing here is we're going to have shards and wedges, which I don't think we've ever seen before. So you've got all 10 colour trios, which I think is going to be really interesting. To help with this, they've created a single new card in this cryptic spire, as you can see on your screens now. So this is one where when you put it in your deck, so it's not at the start of the game, it's not as you draft it, it's when you put it in your deck. You choose two colours and it's basically a tap land for those two colours. I think it's a really neat solution. I, I quite like it. Uh, it's going to be a throwaway common card, but I think it's, you know, it's going to be quite good and interesting to use in your deck. And it means that you don't have to wait for that particular dual land to come around, and I think it's going to be really, really good, and I think it's a great addition that I would like to see again. I'm going to go through the 10 archetypes very quickly. I'll probably do a, a bigger deep dive when we get to the, um, the the full spoiler as a primer video, but you, first of all, we'll have Esper with flicker value. So you've got some classic A to B cards like Mull Drifter. You've got ways to flicker them, like um, Settle Beyond Reality. And this is just caring about getting some value from things in the battlefield and being able to flicker them. Uh, you know, flicker and mull drift has a lot of drafters' favourite thing to do in the world, and I think it's going to be really, really strong. Next up, we've got Graveyard Midrange, and I always like a Graveyard deck in draft format. I think the, the best ones usually have some kind of Graveyard deck, and this is the only one that we've got in the format. But you've got ways to discard, you've got creatures which get bigger uh, when you're putting things in the graveyard, you've got some uh, a little bit of reanimation in there as well, but it's Designed to be a graveyard deck which gets the opponents dead with creatures. And I think, you know, that's a pretty solid mid-range deck because it fits it nicely. And there's going to be some sweet cards in there. Next, we've got a classic Jund. So this is the rock. This is the classic, not modern Jund, but the, the, the idea behind the Jund deck. It's got removal. It's got efficient removal. It's got some strong creatures. And it does that and it gets the opponent dead with, with those. Um, you know, anybody who has played Modern will know how Jund works, or The Rock, which is usually green-black. But yeah, this is a solid, solid deck, mid-range, through and through, the most mid-range deck you can get, and it's always a really strong way to go. Naya is what they call Heroic Aggro, so this is definitely an aggro deck. We've seen Heroic before, and it's usually a very, very aggressive deck, so it cares about you targeting your own creatures with spells. Um, We've seen this, we saw this in Ultimate Masters, I think it was, and it was really strong. I think it was green-white there, green-white and red-white uh, colour pairs. Obviously, this time we're going for a trio. You might play a two-colour pair, you might play three colours. Apparently, it's not going to be as kind of balls-to-the-wall aggro as it has been in the past, uh, but it is still going to be probably the aggro deck of the format, so that's something to bear in mind. But you do have some cool cards like the Grolnok Rhino, I think it is, the, the Grolbok Rhino, I can't quite read it from here, where it is a 4 mana 4-4 four, four Trample, which is solid already for a common, and when you target it with a spell, you get a draw card. So there's going to be a bit more drawn card in this, not just uh, giving yourselves stat boosts or plus one plus one counters when you target them, but again, definitely going to be an aggro deck in the format. Big ramp is the band colours, so green, white, blue. Uh, it ramp it does some big things. There is two, there are two ramp decks in the format, and they said that you kind of six, seven mana creatures are going to be uh, roughly the middle of your mana curve. There is another one later on, which is a value ramp deck in Tima, which we'll come to when we come to Tima. But this is big ramp to go into big things. Said it's going to be kind of. A one that you're going to draft around rares because a lot of your big spells might be rares but they do have some good big commons in there as well ramp decks are always fun and it looks like this isn't the only way to support it in the format going on to the shards uh, sorry the wedges set so this is a stuff that we haven't seen really since uh it was kinds of Tarkir. so you've got mardu which is a sacrifice deck which really works with mardu uh, you often has a black white or, or red black sacrifice you got things like Doom Traveler, which is just a fantastic card to sacrifice. You got different ways to sacrifice them. You got Cartel Aristocrat, which is a free sack outlet, and you can do it as many times as you want. So that's always good to see in one of these decks. Uh, Dark Dweller Oracle is the first time it's been printed as common, so I think that's got some of the pauper players quite happy. But it is a really good way to sacrifice creatures, and you can build some good archetypes around that. And I think it does work well in 
you know, you're going to have a bit of graveyard stuff in uh, Grixis, which is red, black, and blue. So Sacrifice kind of works alongside that. And yeah, I think I can see this really working in what's going on. Next, mid-range ramp. So this is the other ramp deck I talk talked about in Teema. Uh, you're going to do it with a little bit of treasure and things like that. You can see Muldrifter here again. You can see Evolution Reclaimer to help you get the uh, land there as well. But there's no reason why you can't flicker that in this as well as the, the flicker deck. And uh, I really like that kind of cross-pollination between these uh, archetypes. One thing I am a little bit worried about is if the fixing is too good, then you might just end up in five colors, the best way to go. But I was worried about that a little bit with Street New Capenna and look how that one turned out. Going into the third to last one here, Abzan, Counters. And it kind of talked about in the stream about the links to the Outlast ability in um, in Cons and how it kind of put an Outlast on a creature. Outlast was a really inefficient mechanic, but when you had the bonuses from Counters, it worked really well. So you kind of take a bit of best from both worlds here. You're putting the Counters on things. You can see we've got the, the black squire i can't quite read it from here but the the secret squire i think it was called uh, which is an explore card so you get to put things in the graveyard and get the counters on it so you get a bit of cross pollination again there um but you know if you can give all your things the counters uh, first strike and trample uh, with them with plus one plus some counters on and you can just find easy ways to put counters on them you're gonna have a really strong deck penultimate one we've got here is prowess it is your jeskai deck your red white and blue american style and it is Casting spells and getting prowess and creatures, caring about your spells. Sometimes this will be seen more in Is It, but this time we've got the three colours, so uh, Jeskai is a def def place for it to go. Uh, it was in Jeskai in Khans of Tarkir, and there's always some really good things to have in this. Things like Rift Bolt and Thought Scour are going to be really good additions to this. And last but definitely not least, we have another graveyard deck in Graveyard Growth. This is Sultai, and this is making your graveyard big. Maybe there's a little bit of ramp in there as well, and just getting really, really good value from your uh, graveyard. So 10 fantastic archetypes there's a good, good bit of cross-pollination i do always love a flicker i do quite like a ramp archetype as well so there's some really good things i know a lot of people like graveyard as well so i think there's something for everybody here which is exactly what you want from a massive set for, for draft i think it looks like early signs are it's gonna be really good i'm still quite excited i'm gonna very quickly go through some of the reprints but this isn't really what i'm here for but i thought i might as well cover it as we're going over the um the spoilers so we had dockside extortionist make a lot of commander players happy hopefully bring the uh, price down a little bit we've got phyrexian tyranny which i did say it's not a, the strongest card in the world but it is showing off a little bit of these three color things that's got going on uh seeing phyrexians here don't know if that'll be the last time i see the phyrexians but we know that they are coming up in the story we had Fairy's Protection. This is at rare, which I thought was quite good. It's, it's a good expensive card to have at rare. Um, it'll bring the price down a bit more having it rare rather than mythic because uh, it won't affect things very much. But it's always nice to have some good value in, in the rare slot. We've got Bloom Tender also as a rare. This is also another uh, expensive card right now. It is going to be great as a fixer. It's going to be great in ramp. I think it's going to suit the green decks a lot. And apparently it's just when I did some play testing, it was a very strong card to have, which I'm not surprised that it's going to make a lot of mana and it can fix you really, really well. Well, I suppose you've got to have a permanent on the battlefield, but it's still fixing quite well. And then the last, the big one, the last thing they've spoiled, although I think they've spoiled a few more things in between um, doing the stream and doing this video, is Imperial Seal. This is a very, very, very expensive card. Only printed twice in Portal 3 Kingdoms and then as a Judge uh, promo. I think it's going for between $700 and $1,000. So that's, I mean, the price is going to come down. It won't be worth that when you open it, but it's going to be really nice if you do open this, especially if you get a nice foil extended art or something like that. Anyway, that is it from this video. If you liked it, and you know just like it like the video subscribe i will be going over some double master stuff in the next few weeks as i find out more i'll be doing a primer on the set as well so uh, click subscribe and you will get notified for that especially if you click the bell icon and i hope to see you again very soon thanks bye